Hey guys, Lady Phoenix here. Welcome back to some more Sea of Stars. So in the previous video, we spoke with the immortal alchemist, uh, Rashawn, and he told us that he wanted us to get an important item here on Glacial Peak. And we traversed the peak, gotten the Solstice Amulet, and now we're gonna go ahead and report back to him. So we get, oh, and the Solstice Amulet does change the time from day to night or night to day at will, no matter where you at. So you no longer need the pass, which will be actually pretty useful for us in the sacred Gro grove because we got to backtrack uh in today's video to get a skill that we had to unfortunately pass up the first time we went to sacred grove now i will say i made a boo-boo <laughs> i accidentally closed out audacity uh before actually exporting the file so my original commentary is gone which means this is post commentary and it's going to be a little awkward because i haven't post commentated it since oof my Zelda 2 let's play because there was no way I could do live commentary on that but the show must go go on boo-boos happen so it's it's no big deal uh so uh it, we do a lot of progress in today's video we really do uh we do get some backtracking done we do I also go back to um lord have mercy what's the name of the jungle path to get the missing rainbow conch that i missed there that i had no other choice but to pass pass up because i needed the solstice amulet in order to do that um and like i said we do go i do go back to sacred grove and get the skill i think it's for valer and um sarai if i'm remembering correctly i would you should think you would think that i would remember considering i just did this like mirror like two minutes ago <laughs> i just edited it real quick and cut out all the random battles that i needed to and uh here we are <laughs> but uh i don't know what it is about post commentary but it seems like the video takes a bit longer but i'll be fine next time i'll stop working so fast and you know slow it down just a little bit because rushing to get things done <laughs> but anyway um Rashawn is just giving us the run around he's like hey I need you guys to do one more favor for me and it's just like dude we don't have to we don't have time for all this crap but you know the way that he the original plan was to you know make a potion that's going to take centuries and we'll all be dead by then so we have no other choice but to play ball with him and we have to go to Torment Peak which if you remember a few videos back, the people of uh, Dakari Village or Dakari Lake or Lake Dakari had told us not to go there because it was pretty dangerous. And Rashawn's like, oh yeah, it's pretty dangerous. There's a whole dweller in there. So, uh, yeah. But the main reason why he wanted us to go to Glacial Peak is we needed the Solstice Amulet in order to take on the dweller which is i believe it's called the dweller of torment if i'm not mistaken and you'll see why uh in the next video why the solstice amulet is needed well i well actually no girl just said it because we need an eclipse and because we can move the time travel time at will from day to night or night to day at will now we can be able to create essentially an eclipse Uh, anytime we need to and the text is a little bit blurry for me in my in because i'm watching it through playback of my editing software and it's a little bit blurry so i can't make out exactly everything that the characters are saying which is unfortunate but i can manage i, I get the gist of what's going on so but basically, he's like, hey, you go up in there, your mind is going to get lost. Kind of like what the Dweller of Wo Woe did to its victims. Uh, mind control stuff. Well, this is helping us to prevent that. And he gives us a little shortcut. To 
essentially get out of here because technically we're in the double doors of Ant Solo. And if you want to, that will that teleporter will lead you back to Glacial Peak if you need to go back there for for whatever reason. Maybe you missed an, a treasure or something like that, but you can go back there anytime uh, through that portal. And I believe that's the only way you can get to Glacial Peak is through that portal. So, and of course the whirlwind or whirlpool, I should say, uh, will take us back into uh, Lake Dakari, which we don't need to go to right now. So now I'm backtracking to the jungle path at this point because we, I need to get that rainbow conch that I had to unfortunately pass up. And I started to, you know, just show the backtrack because it's honestly not far. All you got to do is just travel south a little bit and you'll see two enemies along with a ladder. And you'll just climb down that ladder and it'll take you right to the statue, right where you need to be. And, you know, always got to pick up our food because food becomes very important, especially later on, like fish and seafood. Oh my gosh, some of the best dishes require a lot of fish. Uh like fillets and seafood um dairy as well so definitely be on the lookout for those items whenever you get it and this battle after i get these potatoes here this battle will be cut and it should be another battle wait no i was working on trying to get this puzzle together so the first thing i had to do was position this um mirror here in the right spot you get this beam of light to appear by making it go nighttime. And I had a hard time figuring out which which position that the, this particular mirror need to go to. When you make it daytime, all the mirrors rise up. But you need it to go to nighttime first in order to make this beam show up. So after I've gotten all the mirrors in the positions that it needed to be in... Um, I was able to go change it in today, except for the mirror to the right. I, I screw up with the beam, you'll see. And then I have to hurry up and turn it to night, make the beam show. But see, I messed up on this mirror, so I had to wait for it to get lowered and move it over one time. So you gotta turn it back today. Make sure it boots all the way up and the mirrors actually go rise up. And then hurry up and then quickly change it tonight to make the beam on the right hand side of the map appear and then that's how you'll enter it like so and battle i randomly can't uh cut out it, it was the same old same old stuff it wasn't nothing important or nothing like that now the lucid crystal is pretty useful it allows you to get another source of mana when you do a back attack or the grapple which is very useful so you know how whenever you attack an enemy with the grapple and uh mana will show up and it'll just be one portion of it well with the lucid crystal it's actually two portions now at this point i cut ahead back to the sacred grove and it's not far into the sacred grove at all but this right here we needed to hop onto the block here and then uh, move it over uh, I believe we have to go tonight yeah we're going tonight and it's the the pillar is going to lift up and you need the solstice amulet in order to do it because you have to be on top of the pillar can't in order to do it and this battle I showed off for funsies because why not I don't know what I, I was thinking maybe I wasn't going to make too much progress in torment peak but I really do uh, I think we get to the tail end of it, to be honest with you. I think we're about two thirds of it done by the time the video ends. And it really helps that I cut out a lot of these battles because originally this file was almost 33 minutes long. So it really does help to cut out some of these random battles. And I know for some people that may take away from the game just a little bit because it is an RPG. But I like to think of it as trying not to waste too much of you guys' time by showing you repetitive things. Like if we've already, in, in our, and I do this for a rule of thumb in RPGs in general. Yeah, it's for Valerian Sarai. Um, I do this rule of thumb with RPGs in general. So I'll fight, you know, the enemies, especially in a new area that I haven't been in before. But after a couple of times and it's just the same old enemies, I just cut it out. Unless something interesting happens, but generally I cut it out. 
but that's it for sacred grove um it's a very short area very small area and i'm done with that so if i could just get into torment peak <laughs> we'll be okay uh i think i'm i think i'm eating uh checking to make sure i got all our recipes maxed out which i do and then i decided to take a rest because you know i did use mp and had a small amount of damage taken to me which was kind of unnecessary because it's actually a campfire and a save point right at the beginning of Torment Peak anyway. But I want to be sure. Now it's very simple. Just use the Solstice Amulet to light up the pillars here. And then that's going to open up and two statues are going to rise. And then you just push the statues in the respective areas and then the door will open. Or stone wall stone wheel something like something stone it'll just roll out the way <laughs> why thank you can't forget about our mushies like them on pizza it's actually been around since oh been a while since i had a mushroom pepperoni pizza Anyway, this is Torment Peak, and I will tell you guys, it is dark. <laughs> I am looking at the playback on this on my newly acquired uh, monitor, which is brighter, and everything setting-wise is just better on this monitor, uh, as opposed to my own Alienware, and I was having difficulty traversing through this area. There are going to be clear crystals uh, throughout this place that you can interact with that will light up and allow you to see better. But for the most part, you will have to rely on like the natural glow that your uh, characters give out. Now, this is a dweller area. So, Solstice Magic is the way to go. Garl and Sarai is just going to do normal damage, but their HP is literally in the hundreds. Except for the sleuth, and uh, there's a reason why with the sleuth. But, same thing with all these dweller enemies or dweller like enemies that i guess like offsprings from the dweller celsus magic is where to go so valer and zell are gonna shine brightly um in this area typically just because of their magic it's nothing against sarai or garl but they just simply don't have it and this was a pretty decent setup for me i was able to use that dash strike and break these guys but i think after this battle i start cutting out the random battles so we don't have to look at it for too much longer zell is going to be struggling with the mp because i use zell's mp quite a lot and these were the crystals i was selling, talking about kind of like kind of light your way a little bit so you can see a little bit better not much better because they're kind of spread out but it's enough to help you get through this isn't a complicated area you know it's it's not hard it's not full of ridiculous puzzles or anything like that it's actually pretty easy to get through lord have mercy i'm getting tired which is why i am so bummed out that i Freaking screwed up. <laughs> also got to edit my uh, Mario RPG video for Wednesday. I have to upload Monday's video because yeah, it's, it's the 11th, and I've yet to freaking even edit that video and get it uploaded. <laughs> uh, but no worries. So I got a new set of daggers, so that's always welcome. Uh, there is one rainbow conch in this area, but we won't, I won't get to that until towards the end of the video. Like the last, I say maybe, maybe about the last three to four minutes of this video. And it is only one rainbow conch in this area. So don't worry about it too much. Um, the best way I can tell you when you're getting close is when you get to a set of vines. I'll be sure to point it out. Um, oh yeah, so this is when I realized the sleuth enemies, the tall, skinny, lanky guys with the two heads and the uh, purple, with the purple eyes, 
those enemies the sleuths that has like i think like 78 health well you can't even attack them regularly with sarai or garl they can only be damaged by solstice magic and even still they have pretty high defense so you may have to use a boosted solstice magic like a sunball or crescent arc or moon arc or you know whatever moon ring or whatever the case may be um in order to actually kill them like in one shot but yeah that those sleuth enemies can only be damaged by solstice magic so keep that in mind because hitting them with garlic or right to make mana generate it won't work so i got one half of it done the other half is over to the right and there's no i don't think there's any more enemies until after i get inside the door i believe and I do believe the next side of, set of vines that I encounter with or interact with will lead me to the rainbow conch, if I'm not mistaken. And I also level up during this whole bit, so that's pretty good too. Which I needed it because I need to give uh, Soraya boosting in health. Her health is pretty abysmal. And I was debating whether or not I wanted to end the video here, which I'm glad I didn't. Because I know the next video is, is going to it's gonna be a pretty long video. And I took a pause and I was thinking about it. I was contemplating about it. I was like, nah, let's just go ahead and go because it's going to be a lot in the next video. I mean, we are I am going to take on a dweller in the next video. So, Spoiler alert. And some enemies should be coming after yeah after this one i cut this one out and we get some happier music don't get me wrong i do love the music here though it's very you know atmosphere like i think i went with mana points for him yeah i don't think anyone got mana points this level up and for him i was going between physical defense and physical attack and ultimately i just went with attack For Valer, I think I ended up going with HP on this one. Next time, if possible, I'll try to go for uh, attack because I forgot she has equipment that's making her HP inflated. And then with her, I went with HP with no hesitation. Because like I said, she needed it. But I forgot. I think she has... I think uh, Valer has the green leaf on her. So she has an extra 15 hit points over everyone so but there's our rainbow conch i forgot to mention the vines my bad <laughs> so it's right after the save point not too far well not directly after but not too far from it so i do have a battle coming up and i do go ahead and cut that out because you know same old enemies and then I'm going to be coming across another set of enemies pretty soon. So I see another edit. I think it's inside this room. Yeah. It's taking a lot to level up, but I'm getting a decent amount of experience. So that's always good. And I was looking at like the HP and everything and Sarai and Zell are kind of behind HP wise and Valer had the most. So I'm just trying to figure out what to do. I ended up giving the Solstice Slash, Solstice Sash I should say, to, I think I do end up giving it to Zell at some point in the video. I think I was kind of going back and forth with it in my mind. That's why I didn't. Oh, wait, no, there's a piece of equipment. That's why. Because I realized I, I thought I was going down to go the quote unquote wrong way, but I was actually quote unquote progressing. So the green leaf is why I decided to switch things ar around a little bit. Because magic attack wise, I think 
Zell has the higher magic attack stat. So I just went ahead and put the Solstice stat sash on him and then gave her the signet of glory. I believe that's how I did it. Because uh, she has Lunar Shield. And Lunar Shield is very useful, but it's very expensive. It's like it's worth 11 MP, which may not sound like a lot, but it really is. So just move stuff around to make my characters a little bit more ideal. And I, I like a nice little balance with my characters. But as long as you play strategically and, you know, try to get as many time blocks as you can and time hits, I think you'll be okay in this game. Yeah, this is a, this is a site to uh, walk into. <laughs> I, I just love those like, yep, this is, this is, this is a, what we walked into out of all places to see this particular scene in it, it's the torment peak <laughs> oh uh we we won't be rude what exactly is going on though? <laughs> I'm and I'm definitely with Sarai. Like, what is going on? <laughs> oh, so that's probably why they were peeking their heads in the holes and you know having their butts in there because they were looking at their mom. Sounds exhausting, but could be. Okay, Audacity cut out for some reason, but I don't know what's going on with my computer or Audacity for that matter. <laughs> I think they're having a little break time and it's just like, no, I'm not re-recording this. <laughs> I've just know I will figure out how to sync it up I will and I wish you would hush girl because you're sitting up here and you're volunteering our services this that and the third we don't know if we can be able to help these monkeys okay like I know you want to be you know say the world and I appreciate your good heart but sometimes you need to just hushy hushy because I don't know if we gonna be able to do this. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Girl be getting us into a pickle sometimes, I swear. Sometimes I just wanna smack him on the back of the head. And Valer had no other choice but to back it up. But at this point, I go ahead and end the video and in the next video, we are going to take on the Dweller of Torment and hopefully save these monkeys mom so if you'd like to see more let's plays or we can watch this from the channel please be sure to click on the links in the description below but until then you guys take care and have an awesome day